joined now by two terrific guests on this front. Uh, my pal over at CNBC, the senior economics reporter Steve Leisman, and Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG, whose Twitter thread on housing sort of got my alarm bells uh, ringing this morning, and which is, I'm so glad you could join us today, Diane. But Steve, let me start with you. And look, this is a case where voter sentiment about the economy and where the economy is headed are actually in sync, correct? Potentially, yeah, to the extent that people are worried about a recession, it is a abiding concern of, of economists, forecasters, CEOs, Federal Reserve officials. Kind of interesting that such a small percentage think we're in one now. There's a lot of talk about are we in one yet, but 59% uh, think that's to come, which is not a very good number. And Chuck, I want to say you were spot on starting with housing because, you know, I've been doing this poll for 14 years, which is ridiculous to think about it, but nothing colors people's attitudes about the economy as does their views about housing. The 23% who think their home is going to decrease, that's the highest level since 2008. That's the financial crisis. And the percent who think their home is going to increase just 32%, that's the lowest level since the pandemic. So I think you're right to focus on housing and the importance of that right. for people's attitudes on the economy. Well, Diane, that is why you're here, because, look, gas prices may be the billboard people see. Boy, things are getting more expensive. But when it comes to sort of feeling what is your financial feeling on financial security the biggest check you write every month is either for rent or a mortgage uh, and this is where you come in you were sounding the alarm bell you're fearing that the housing the housing market is crashing it is crashing and you know what's really it underscores is how it is. We've seen rapid rate hikes, not just rate hikes on mortgage rates. They've been rapid rate hikes. And that's even more destabilizing than just moving up rates. And I think it's something that the Fed has understated in their own views in terms of how rapidly it's taken a toll on the housing market. And what's interesting is we're seeing also some of the hottest markets in the country are now beginning to cool on prices despite still really constrained supplies. People aren't willing to sell out of those 3% mortgages that they locked into a year ago and put their houses on the market. And so we're not seeing the downward pressure on prices that you would normally see from a surge right. in an excess supply of people trying to sell homes. You're seeing it from the fact that houses are just unaffordable. So we're in this weird period on housing, Diane, where we, we, still, have a, we actually still have a housing crunch in this country. So that's also cost, causing some price pressure. Uh, it, get consumer -y here, uh, con sort of consumer help here for a minute. That was CNBC. They were just giving us the recent concept of home ownership, uh, and 59% of the population they measured, they are scared of an inflation which is coming in, a recession which is coming in 2025. And 40 million Americans are at the risk of an eviction. Hello, there is Google, there is Zillow. There is no reason for you to be going through an eviction. There are ways for you as an American citizen or a green card holder to own a home in the United States. Think FHA is 3% down. Also think about down payment assistance. Now we need to walk away from looking at homes to start looking at townhomes. So we know 74 million people, they live in some type of HOA or they live in a condo. So that's the best option because a condo townhome is around what two hundred and sixty thousand dollars versus a single family home is four hundred and thirty thousand dollars now the difference is one is attached one isn't i bought my first townhome at 18 years old by 22 i owned like 10 of them so townhome is the way to go cnbc was also telling us the importance of housing you need to worry more about housing than the price of gas. Your highest bill is your rent or your mortgage. So therefore, you shouldn't be renting. You should be buying. How do you buy? You need a loan application from the lender. That's number one. You need credit score. That's number two. You're also going to need a down payment. And now, either if you're, if you're in the United States and you are a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, you can get a down payment from certain cities. Like I told you, Palm Beach is giving up to $100,000 in down payment assistance. And other cities, if you go on Zillow, they'll show you, like, just Google right now, townhome for sale in the United States and look for the city. So press Google. Make sure Google is your best friend. And then you look at townhome for sale in the United States. 
And then when you do that, Zilla should pop up and you press on there. So the difference with a house versus a townhome is a single family home is not attached. A townhome is attached, but it looks like a single family home. It's two story. Usually you can get a three bedroom, two bath. It's the same square footage or a little smaller than a single family home. I live in a townhome in Boca Raton, three bedroom townhome, two bath with a family of four. It is plenty, plenty, plenty. I'm raising nine year old twins. It is plenty. Interest rate is at 7%. So homes are unaffordable for the first time and don't expect the prices to go down because when I do the charting, and I show you what's happened in 2008, it's the same, same scenario. And it's the same thing that happened. It's the same scenario. 2008, the prices averaged $200,000. In 2020, they averaged the same 200. If you look at the chart for 2020, it's the same chart, 2008. And it's not a coincidence. President Barack Obama shut down banks in 2008. Remember the Dodd-Frank? Ooh, that's so horrible. I hate the Dodd-Frank on the housing market. And I hate that the SEC has power over the banks. This really affects us in this country when the SEC has power over our banks. The only opportunity you and I have to be rich in this country, in America, is through buying housing. So the bank is your best friend. The government will always make you think the bank is your enemy when the government is the really the one taxing us and hiking it up. So in 2020, they closed down Silicon Valley Bank. That affected the housing market. Don't think when they close down banks that that doesn't affect the housing market. It affects the housing market a lot. All right. So these are the things you need to buy a home. You need a bank. You need a loan application from the lender. You need credit score. Make sure your credit score is high. You need a down payment. If you're going FHA, you only need 3% of the purchase price. If not, go and get some government, not government assistance, down payment assistance from a city. Zillow is often 1% down payment assistance if you buy in a certain area. So if Zillow is doing 1% and you go FHA, you only need 2%. Let's just say a townhome is 250,000. It's really 265 is the average townhome. 250. 3% is 7,500. So if Zillow is giving you 2,500, you need to come up with 5,000. <gasps> How do you do that? Probably sell your home. That's not sell your home, sell your car. Probably sell your car. Start with selling your car. Friends, I'm Tisha Paul. Hit the free like and the free subscribe button. Don't forget to check out our tag products today. Safaria, it is gorgeous, it's lovely. You can now shop on the internet while you watch your favorite show. I'm Tisha Paul. We'll see you another time.